I'm here with uh, Mark Young of DCU Drama discussing their forthcoming production of Glengarry Glen Ross. So Mark, tell me, what is Glengarry Glen Ross about? Well, Glengarry Glen Ross is a, it's a play written by David Mamet. Uh, you might know it because it was a, it was a popular movie uh, starring Al Pacino, Alec Baldwin, um, Jack Lemmon. It's, um, essentially, it's a play about uh, real estate salesmen in the 1980s. Uh, and it focuses mainly on one of the salesmen, uh, Shelley Levine, who is kind of down in his luck and is um, going to get fired at the end of the month if he can't sell. Um, so it, it's kind of a story about desperation and competitiveness, and competitiveness, and it generally it kind of deals with kind of masculinity in a way. Um, so it's a very it's a very interesting watch. You know, kind of takes takes a swipe at kind of the the kind of the civilized male. Yeah, yeah. And tell me, does does it resemble the film? Does the play are the play and the film are they are they basically the same thing or pretty much like um, I think the writer himself, Dave Mamet, was involved with the film. Uh, he wrote the screenplay. There are f- a few differences, obviously. When you, I think personally, I think when you adapt something from from one medium like movies or books to another, you can't have everything word for word. It just no. doesn't work like that. Um, so it is it is slightly different. There is that um, very famous scene uh, with Alec Baldwin going around like, oh, it's be closing, and uh, yeah. everybody thinks that's in the play. It's not at all. I had loads of people coming in being like, can I play Alec Baldwin's part? I was like, no, you can't. And have you? did you consider putting that in at any point, or I, would you prefer to stay true to the play in its entirety? I was thinking about that, but um, I think any, any kind of play buffs who saw that would, would yeah. kind of lynch me. But I, I was thinking of, I probably will do something where we're going to be doing our promo next week. Okay. So I'll probably fit that in with the promo to get kind of people, e- like, you know, their ears pricked, you know, so they, they kind of recognise it a bit more easily. Excellent. And who's starring in the production? Will we know anybody from past shows? You probably would. Pretty much everyone on the cast has done a DCU drama production before. Uh, we have a lot of guys who were involved in our uh, our production of Clockwork Orange last oh, semester, yeah. which is a big hit. And um, like it's it's actually a, it's an, an incredibly strong cast. I'm very very confident with them. Um, yeah, no, like um, it's I, I'd say anybody who's been to a DC drama event before will oh, probably right. recognize the faces. You know, uh, the kind of the Vinnie Kennys and the, the Vinnie Kennys and the Malloys. <laughs> That's kind of it. Yeah, the old reliable, so the to speak. Gingers and the pedo beards. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, uh, I hear, uh, it's supposed to be an all-male cast, but I hear they actually have women in this production. We do, yeah. Like it, it has always been um, generally an all-male cast because that's just how it was written. Uh, but what I wanted to do with my auditions was just to open it up and see what you know males or females can do and what can they, what they can bring to the table. In the end, we only have like now in our cast we have one girl involved, but she's playing quite a. Kind of like a, a very much uh, yeah. role made for for a man. So like it's 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 what I pretty much what I want to see is somebody, um, somebody make the role their own. You know, yeah. like kind of go go above gender. Although yeah. that sounds like something a feminist would say. <laughs> oh. It's an interesting dynamic. All right. So the pl- the film is known for its profanities. How much of that comes across in the play? Oh, a lot. There's <laughs> um, there's actually so much racism in in the play. It's uh. It's not even funny. It's uh, like they they had to cut loads of that in the movie, but um, it's uh, it's it is interesting. Like the profanity, it's not, it it's not excessive. Like that that's one brilliant thing about David Mamet's plays is that he doesn't, um, like he really knows how to use his his f words um yeah. in, correctly in the sentence, which some, which some writers just can't do. Yeah. But like you know, he really he really uses them right and he uses them to portray his you know his actors' current emotions and attitudes really well. And you're performing it in the space in the Helix. That's right, space in the Helix on the 13th so, of April. So how is that going to, how the space has three audiences, so how is that, how are you going to re- reflect that through the actual production? It does, it's um, it's a difficult, it is a difficult um, setting to put, or a difficult set because we have to be very wary of, you know, there's always audiences on your left and your right rather than your front, so you have to be very careful when you're blocking it, you know, when I'm, when I'm there in rehearsals because you know it's it's a lad's first like you know for any actor pretty much any amateur actor their first um instinct is to kind of turn their back when they're talking to somebody or something like that so i've kind of been getting the lads to plant their feet and make sure that they always have one face facing towards the audience um it's a difficult i admit it is a difficult set but um it also makes for a very personal experience um which uh, which we're so lucky to be able to use you know the space is a great great venue 
Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Mark. No um, you, you'll be able to see Glen Gary, Glen Ross in the space in the Helix on the 13th of April. 13th of April, 13th on Monday. April. Right. Thank right. You. Thanks very much, lads. All right.